Cities generally can handle their population being in flux. It's natural and the gradual ebb and flow of people is easy to manage. But when 20,000 people suddenly become temporary citizens of your town, things can get a little hairy. In the case of Ragbri, it's 20,000 people who, for the most part, take up very little room per person. But when you combine the entirety of the ride into one mass, it's tough to picture where they'll all go when it's time to bed down for the night. As it turned out, they went everywhere. Certainly, some riders already live in Cedar Falls and just went home. But what about everyone else? Many people camped out on the UNI campus. Stretching from the Unidome far into the westernmost reaches of the UNI campus in a large open field, tents sprang up, and suddenly the campus was a full-fledged campground. The farther away the campground from campus, the quieter it got, until eventually the bustle of the midway was abandoned completely in the quiet campground. No matter where I went, there were camping rigs everywhere. Some big, some small, RVs and Airstream trailers. These support teams often arrived well in advance of the riders and had everything set up and ready. And then uh, once I get to where we're going, then we'll unload the totes and the tents and the bag chairs and all of their gear. We'll kind of get everybody lined up and get all, uh, all the water ready and make sure that there's something cold and something for them to eat so that they'll have enough energy to come down here and spend the money and enjoy the entertainment. Other people found alternative accommodations. Some had friends or family in Cedar Falls and stayed with them, but only so many people had this luxury. For the others, there are many Cedar Falls citizens who opened their doors to Ragbri riders, lending their yards as campgrounds, or if the riders preferred, a nice bed to sleep in. Some, like Martha Cruz, chose to host in order to meet people. I have one team that's coming here. I was supposed to have two, but one team canceled. But the team that's coming is from Seattle, I understand. And three people other than that, I don't really know what else to expect. I have lots of space that's available. There's there's nobody else here, and I have plenty of room. Steve Kerrigan and Mary Taylor are friends of mine. I thought it'd be a nice thing to do. Plus, it's an adventure to get to meet people that are coming through town for the first time. Last time Red Bike came through, I had a lady that stayed in my house. Uh, actually, when I wasn't home, she had uh, reached out to people who belonged to Delta Kappa Gamma, which is a group for women educators, and needed a place to stay. And so I made it so she could stay here, which was easy for me to do. It just seems like a good way to show off our beautiful state. I think it means hospitality. I think it means friendliness. I think it means a, a chance to get to know people that you might not ordinarily meet. Others found out that they actually knew the riders they were hosting. Well, to be honest with you, I hadn't planned on it. And then I got a, I, yeah. I got some letters left in the mailbox Roger wanted Harry people to stay I here. And I wasn't going to do it. And then I got a call from an old roommate of mine who went to school here at you and I with me from 20... got it done, man, but it was like... Might be 25 years ago. Uh, I asked if there was a chance that they could throw some tents in my yard. And at yep. first I kind of hesitated, well, we I thought, you know, oh, but you know, it's we turned out great. And they're, and you know, they're good, it. good people and we're having a nice time Same. sitting here and just I having a couple of uh, cold ones. I would definitely do it again. Uh, good people, most everybody you meet on Ragbri are good people. They're out just to have a good time. I mean, it's, it's a lot of fun, a lot of camaraderie. Met a guy from Delaware, as a matter of Genie, fact, that was, yeah, you know, we play him in football. It was kind of hard to be nice to him, but I was. He's a nice guy. Oh, it's just nice to be out going through Iowa, going across Iowa, you know, on the roads. I want to thank the police, I'm telling you. They do a nice job of stopping traffic and making it safe for everybody out there riding. It was great. Over the course of looking at camping, a question comes up. Sure, having a place to sleep is great, but there are other things that people need. What about those things? Restrooms are generally accepted as a necessity for any large group of people, for starters. Of course, the RAGBRAI committee had taken care of that problem. Most days there's a line that takes 10 to 20 minutes to go to the restroom. Here it's right in and right out. Speaking for myself, clean hands are always a must, and especially after having stepped foot in a public restroom. Clean water was on tap from conveniently placed faucets, which, much to my relief, are all operated by a foot pump. So, we have three items checked off the list of necessities. Shelter, restroom facilities, and clean water. 
the food vendors makes four. That leaves something that's very much appreciated in this situation. After exercising with strenuous cardio for the past six hours, a nice shower would do wonders in rejuvenating your mind and body. And of course, people around you might be glad to see you stop by the shower facilities as well. The UNI Wellness Center opened its doors for showers and if riders wanted more refreshment, the swimming pool. A soak in the hot tub was the preferred method of many riders to help soothe the aches and pains that they'd accumulated during the ride. The riders may have scattered to the winds over the course of the day, but when the time came to leave Cedar Falls, they all poured back onto Hudson Road to make their way out of town. Within hours, entire campsites were barren, where there had just been riders 20,000 strong. Tents were collapsed, trailers were stowed, and cars, trucks, RVs, and rental cargo trucks were all funneling their way out of the field, leaving nothing but an empty field and a few trash cans. Tents were collapsed, trailers were stowed, and cars, trucks, RVs, and rental cargo trucks were all slowly funneling out of the campsite, leaving nothing but an empty field and a few trash cans. In the time it took for daylight to creep over the horizon and eventually spread, it looked like nothing had happened at all.